thinking that he, uh, God isn't with you. That's, I don't know, it's just this, this reminder there of, of how we might have, you know, felt. Just your opinion. <laughs> Amen. Anybody else? Yes. Um, remember the, the slang we, that you came up, Amen, I said, and we, it, it, it's, um, you know, in, in the sense that uh, there's nothing new under the sun, so Bible had that first. <laughs> okay. My sister? I believe I had something on page 14, but yeah. more so at the bottom of the page. Just adding to um, the, the fear part, God, in the last paragraph of 14, God also asked the question, where is my reverence? Amen. In the Hebrew, the word for reverence is mora, and contextually speaking, the prevailing meaning of the word is awe, respect, and deep reverential fear. God expects us to have the Can y'all hear? <laughs> can, you, can you read that just a little bit louder? Can you start or read that just a little bit louder for us? God, asks, God also asks the question, where is my reverence? In the Hebrew, the word for reverence is more, and contextually speaking, the prevailing meaning of the word is awe, respect, and deep reverential fear. God expects us to have respect and awe for him. He expects for us to have such a deep sense of admiration for him that it inspires in us a reverential fear that recognizes him as our Lord our God, our Father, our Master, our Savior, our Redeemer, our King, our Judge, and our Creator. Amen. That was well said. Okay, can someone over here read question number, was it three? Question number three. Mm -hmm. How does honor for for the Lord and fear for the Lord look on a practical level. And I um, put page, oh, that's the question, I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead, you can answer the question if you'd like. Um, page 15, and this is two. Um, God is not some capricious God waiting to destroy us at will. He is a loving Father and the sovereign Lord of the universe who is worthy of our loyalty love and respect consequently to fail to recognize him as such is failed to give him is to fail to give him the honor and reverence that is due him luke 6 46 our attitude ought to be that um of the 24 elders who said you are worthy O lord to receive glory and honor and power for you created all things and by your will they exist and were created revelation 4 and 11 amen amen we could even start it at the, the very beginning of that paragraph as well can someone over in this section read question number four oh we can ready to get you some juice How can we treat God's worship with contempt? Mm. How can we treat God's worship with contempt? Mm. I might say that I'm a little guilty of that this morning myself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can... Some over in, in this section over here. Where can these answers be found in the workbook? Brother Parker. Amen.
Well, well, we're going to jump around. You can read the first one. Okay. Uh, how often do we come in late? Because mm. How often do we come in late? Because we simply fail to, to plan properly. Can somebody in this section give us some advice on that? Sister Eula. Plan at nighttime. Make sure you don't oblivious. Make sure your your Bible and your books and everything is right there together. You know, so in the morning you don't gotta be looking around. Where's this? Where's that? Um, so leave an extra few minutes early, like I didn't this morning. But you know, that's <laughs> something I could have did. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Anybody else? Word of thought. <laughs> that uh, particular question was took me back to the ten virgins where five prepared and five did not. Mm -hmm. uh, and oftentimes, uh, like Sister Eula said, we don't prepare and we should prepare. As a matter of fact, we should be pre preparing all week for the Lord's day. Mm -hmm. You know, he gives us six days when we want to. Mm -hmm. And within those six days, as we're doing our Latreo worship, then we should also be preparing for that one day that he asked for. Mm -hmm. So that preparation should be all week. You know, and and we don't often do that because we're so caught up in our day-to-day -day living mm. that we forget until Sunday night, I mean, Saturday night or Sunday morning, then we're running. So uh, the, the virgins themselves, mm -hmm. you know, five were wise because they planned ahead. Mm -hmm. They bought extra oil. And then five were not wise because they did not plan, ran out of oil, and then wanted the, the ones who prepared, give us your extra oil. Well, then we give you our extra because you didn't have any, then if we run out, we don't have any backup. So they said, okay, we go buy our own oil. And while they were gone, the bridegroom came and the door was shut. How many of us will be left outside with the door shut because we haven't prepared? Amen. You know, Brother Clark. Yes. I was just going to say when you said, you know, to prepare make sure you go to bed earlier on Saturday night um, or regular time, but don't stay up late. And some people, you have to set your clock fast. You set your clock fast in your car and you set your clock fast in the bedroom or whatever. Because some people run late all the time and some of us don't. Mm. <laughs> and it drives those of us who don't crazy when you're with somebody that's always late. Because, you know, would you boss like that if you were late to work all the mm -hmm. time? I don't think so. You know, to me, if I was 15 minutes early, not I mean, less than that, I was late. Mm -hmm. So that's what, you know, you just have, some people have to set the clock that fast. Yeah, it's Amen. Like purposing in your heart, sister. Purpose in your heart. Mm -hmm. Wow. So let me tell you what happened to me this morning. Okay. So, you know, I got up at 6 o'clock this morning. Did you get it, Ben? Thank you. I got up at 6 o'clock this morning, go for my lesson. Uh, shaved and cut my hair last night. And, you know, Brenda ironed my shirt for me, and, you know, my clothes was ready to go. All I had to do was wash up and be gone. I do not know what happened. Because I was ready, I prepared, but I have no clue what went wrong this morning. Me? Did you? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Procrastination. And you think, I got more time. Oh, I can, oh, let me get this extra cup of coffee. Oh, I can sit a minute and, and watch this on TV. Or uh, I'm going to. Oh, television right quick that you know it's going to keep me in the mood I'm going to listen to some music and time just escapes you yeah. you know and you look up and it's like oh no now I'm running late mm -hmm. I was up in plenty of time mm -hmm. we procrastinate so y'all 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 pray for for the whole church when it comes to Amen. procrastination Amen. <laughs> Amen. Mm -hmm. 
can someone over in question number five? Okay. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, no, I'm sorry. Go back to page 16. Yeah, go back to page 16. Read the, the second dot. Second bullet. Se second what? Bullet. bullet. Yeah, second bullet. How often do we come in sleepy and tired because we stayed up Saturday night watching a late movie or stayed out late on the town without any regard for the approaching Lord's Day? Amen. Can someone in this section uh, give us some type of uh, edification on how we could do better with this question? Sister Tanya. Okay. It's pretty easy, just don't stay up late. <laughs> 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 I mean, you know, we all know what we have to do on Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. Like everyone has stated, if we prepare the evening beforehand, or like Shannon said, mm -hmm. just uh, throughout the week we just prepare, you just know that on Saturday night, you need to probably shut down by 9 o'clock. By 9 o'clock? Well, you know, procrastinators, <laughs> <laughs> 9 o'clock is good. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, Brother Branch, you got your hand up? Okay, wait for the mic, Brother Branch. Here you come. This is going to be good. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone knows that I hate to be late for anything. I'm always, I always try to be the first one here. All of the time. On Saturday, I spend my whole day preparing for worship service. And like she said, sometimes you have things, you start thinking about things, and that takes up time. And before you know it, you're rushed. You know, I'm rushing coming down 487 and 77, speeding, because I shouldn't be trying yeah. to get here. Yeah, that's a lot of us doing that. Did, who, a lot of us did that this morning, didn't we? <laughs> Amen. Amen. I was thinking about this this morning that uh, we, the concept of the weekend, I think has been one of the most detrimental things for us. We, it's it's a time for unwinding and and sort of forgetting the responsibilities we have. I mean, in, in general, it's time for sports, and mm -hmm. of course, number one on sports usually would be the Browns, but no, it's done now. <laughs> That's the best thing that happens when they start losing. We, we get more time, you know. <laughs> but uh, but this, this concept of this is the end of the week, it's we're time to wind down, and then Monday we got to go at it again. Well, this is the first day of the week. This is the beginning, a, a chance for a new beginning, and... <laughs> We need to focus on it that way as brothers and sisters to, 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 to think differently than we have been for many, many years uh, of that this is the new beginning. And like Brother Branch was talking about, prepare ahead of time for it. Get, wrap up our weekend Saturday. Get ready for a new beginning mm. on Sunday. Just, just a thought. Amen. Somebody else? Sister Kim. Um, you know, in listening to all of this, you know, I have to pray for patience. And, you know, I'm, I'm asking throughout the week for my mind to be restored and, you know, let, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight because, you know, I, I feel that there's no excuse. If, if we're in, if we're honoring God, like the Israelites should have been doing, if we're honoring him, then just like we get up for work, just like we get ready for appointments, that we're never late, hardly. Mm -hmm. It should be even more so double that respect and reverence for Sunday morning. So I have no tolerance <laughs> And I, you know, I have to ask God for patience and to keep my mind um, clear and and um, focus on Him all week, so that I never fall into that trap. Amen. 
Anyone else? Right here, Brother Clark. You know, I I get up every morning. I Wednesday, Thursday, Monday through Friday. I'm I'm up, and I don't know. I look back on my on my life. I said, How did I get up with three kids and all this responsibility? Get here on time, nine thirty. Didn't miss the time. Didn't miss the beat. I had my mother. You know, Cindy was right there. I don't know if because I. I um, knew that she was going to call me. I had to get up at a certain time. I don't know if it's that. I look now trying to figure out what can I do different to get here on time. It is so hard to get up in the morning. And then my um, daughter got to change her shift. And she, I got to get up at 6 o'clock. I don't know how I'm going to do it. 6 o'clock in the morning, I can't even get up at night. So being at work on time is easy because all I got to do is roll over to out of the bed and go to a chair. So I ain't never got to get out the house. Well, that was easy. <laughs> and, I, and I still find myself getting there late. I'm mm. like, oh, my goodness, I don't know. So I've just been praying and trying to find out what I can do different. I don't know. Amen. Amen. Uh, I used to have a, uh, a business that I operated from home. Okay, and, and she's right. You get up and you walk over to the chair and, and do whatever you do. All right, but I found that in order to get out of that state that you're in, you get up as if you're going out of the house. You get up, you, do, you, you wash up, you do the things that you would normally do before you go to work. And you'll find that you'll find that you fall into that uh, same pattern you're in when you were going out the door, uh, as opposed to just going over the chair, because we get lazy. You know, it, we get, oh, I know I can get, shoop, run all over there, and I'm done. But do it as if, you get up as if you're going out. It'll work out better for you. <laughs> Amen. Sister Shine. And what happens is, especially with this work at home thing, is that we become, the Bible says, slothful. And we become slothful towards the Lord. And we are no better than, than these people in Malachi when we allow the outside circumstances mm -hmm. to guide our spiritual life, mm -hmm. you know, instead of letting God guide our spiritual life. If we reverence him, if we honor him, it is not only our obligation, but our duty, you know, to be on time, to make every effort. Yes, there are people, my sister-in-law was always late, God rest her soul, uh, but I told her there's one appointment she wasn't going to be late for, and she wasn't going to be able to cancel it, she wasn't going to be able to reschedule, you know, so if we start thinking about God in a different way, like Alan said, instead of thinking about, you know, the weekend, Saturday is the end of the week, Sunday is a new day, it's the beginning of the week, it is the beginning of, of, of our opportunity to reignite, reconnect with God you know, for another week. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it, it's incumbent on us to, to take a different attitude uh, in how we worship and not just be like these people going through the motions, actually kind of mindless because it's, you know, it's Sunday, I got to go to church. Well, I'll get there. I'm going to get there before the sermon. Oh, I, and, and since we have communion first, well, I need to get there in time for communion. Uh, you know, and instead of thinking of it is the Lord's day, you know, rising up saying, thank you, Lord, that you allowed me to rise this day. I'm going to honor you. I'm going to praise you. I'm going to give you all that I have. Because we don't come here to give. We come on Sunday morning, the Lord's day, to give back to God. It mm -hmm. is the day that he has designated, especially for us, to give him honor. Amen. Now we're going to move to the third bullet. Can someone over in this section read the third bullet? On page number 16, you have a workbook. Anybody? How often do we sit and worship and refuse to open our mouths to sing when the church is singing? Mm. All right, can someone in this section you know, give us some enlightenment? How can we do better? Sing. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Just do it. 
Amen. Just do it. Mm. It's that easy. Brother Allen. And, and I try and encourage them that it doesn't matter because uh, some of the best singing I've ever heard was mostly people that couldn't sing. And God has a way of taking that and blending Amen. it and making it work mm -hmm. as opposed to where you have a congregation that just a few sing. And even if mm -hmm. they're good, it doesn't sound nearly as good as a whole congregation Amen. singing from their heart, no matter how bad they might be individually. Mm -hmm. God has a way of doing amazing things with that. Because Amen. It's from, because it's from the heart. Amen. So everybody can. You know, I, I find that, uh, you know, I, I'm not a good singer. But I think I sing pretty good with the congregation. <laughs> I, I can't carry a tune to save my life. But when I'm here and we sing it, I'm letting it all go. Amen. I let it out. And I, sometimes... I've got that look, but, you know, I just, oh, well, that's your problem. Amen. And, I, and I'm singing, you know. Amen. I, makes me feel good. Makes Amen. me truly to feel good. Okay. okay. Can someone in this section read the bullet number four? Bullet number four. If you have your workbook. Anybody. Page 16. Bullet number four. preacher's sermon because we because we disagree with something he said checking our email or texting someone across the building about some of what uh, what someone is wearing so have you ever experienced this have you ever saw someone doing this did this distract your worship? Sister Debbie. That's what I was going to say, is that if someone is sitting around you and they're on their cell phone or iPad and it's not, they haven't got their Bible on it, you know, it is, it takes your mind away from the sermon because, it, you know, it's light. So your eyes are drawn to a light. And, you know, you try to focus in on the sermon, but it makes it a lot harder to focus in on the sermon when somebody is, you know, on their iPad or phone. Amen. So let me come back over here. I like this side. Got one. Sister oh, Taylor. Sister Christine. Yeah, I wanted to go back to the uh, question you asked before about uh, singing. And I just, w I was looking at Psalms 100 and verse number two, where the Lord says, the word says, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Amen. And we ought to know that we're coming into his presence. And we, uh, it's a part of worship to sing. My brother? You asked about honoring, right? I just wanted to ask a question. Is it possible to honor someone that you're not in love with? Mm. Good question. Good question. Mm. Is it possible to honor someone, truly honor. truly honor someone that you're not in love with? Because we can honor people all day long. But truly honor them with our heart That's a different question. You know, we can honor, you know, sometimes uh, people in the community. We, we went to a, a police event, right, where people were, were being honored, you know, for their, their work in the community. But how can you 
honor, how can you truly honor someone that you're not in love with? That's a good question. So in other words, how can you honor God if you're not in love with God? I don't think you can. If you have no love for God, how can you possibly honor God? My brother? My name is Michael. Uh, I think when, uh, when the Lord presents himself to you, you, uh, you develop a love for him and which honors him. From the beginning, He's, he's presenting himself to you. You don't know, you don't even love yourself totally if you're not worshiping God or honoring God. The first decision you make to recognize him is an honor not only unto him, but unto you and everything around you. That being said, uh, like, like when, I, when I was a young man and I used to stay on the phone with my girlfriend and spend time, and we didn't even be talking about nothing, but I was spending time. You only love God as much as time, much, or love God as much as you spend time with him or spend time in his word. Mm -hmm. So that's honor me. I think it's a process of growing to honor him through your praise, your worship, your lifestyle. You can worship and praise your God. Your lifestyle. Mm. Your lifestyle. You can worship and praise God without even opening your mouth. So that's what I believe. Amen. Hmm, Interesting. You can praise God without even opening your mouth. But in worship service, we are required to sing because it is part of worship service. We're going to move to, uh, okay, well, the fifth bulletin, no, well, the fourth bulletin. Okay, so we were talking about someone um, having their cell phone out or their iPad and they're distracting you. So at that point, somebody got their phone out, their iPad, ain't got nothing to do with worship service, it's distracting you. At that point, what is your responsibility? They disturbing your worship. At that point, what is your responsibility? <laughs> Amen. What you say? Say it real loud. I said that to ask them kindly to put it away. Keith said to give them the evil eye. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We're going, to lo going to, we're going to go along with asking them kindly to put it away. <laughs> I would say stay joyful. Focus more yourself. Focus more yourself. Yeah. Maybe talk to them later, yeah. and then you find out that they mm -hmm. were using it in worship. Um, so, you know, don't judge in a situation like that where somebody is always, a, you know, get your attention, maybe it's a crying child or whatever. You, you can control yourself. You can't control somebody else. Mm -hmm. But you can control yourself and keep your focus. Amen. Amen. But don't forget, it's still your responsibility. If they are not using that phone or iPad pertaining to worship service, we don't judge. But if that light keeps distracting you and you looking over there, you don't see no scriptures. You don't see no Bible references. <laughs> you know. I would even, you know, say, ask them, what are you doing? What are you looking at? And kindly ask them to stop. Okay, bulletin number five. We need to hurry up. 
Somebody in this section over here. Bulletin number five. So it says, how often do we go to worship? Is that it? Yeah. How often do we go to worship with our hearts somewhere else, thinking about where we are going after worship instead of focusing on what's going on in worship? So how do we stay focused? You know, you know, the world is full of distractions and, you know, life happens sometimes and things be on our mind. All right here, Clark. Say no to Satan, because I'd be lying if I'd say that it has never happened to me. Mm-hmm. But when it does, I just refuse. I know where it's coming from, and I jump back on the trail. Amen. And I'm, I'm not going to do that. I've been here, you know, at a point, and it wasn't yesterday or whatever, but I can recall, you know, thinking about, well, I'm going to cook. I'm going, no, this isn't the time for this. Mm-hmm. I'm going to eat later, but get back on the train, say no, mm-hmm. because he's always on it. Amen. And I, um, I think it's fair to say that this didn't happen to all of us at one time. You know, well, we have other things on our minds other than worship service. You know, things happen in our life. And they tend to come in in our thoughts when we are trying to focus on God. But the key is what my sister said. Say to yourself, this is not the time. And put your focus back on God. And bulletin number six, is it? Someone over here, can you read bulletin number six in the workbook? How, How often do we go to worship with a carnal disposition, having just left our house, fighting with our spouse, or having just engaged in some senseless act of road rage that caused us to spout off some ungodly words or demonstrate some unholy gestures. Mm. You know, so Brenda tells me sometimes I have road rage. And I have to admit that sometimes I do. You ever been driving and somebody just cut in front of you? You're trying to get somewhere and, you know, you're going 35 miles an hour and they going 20 miles an hour. (laughs) You know, sometimes road rage kicks in. So y'all pray for me with that. But I'm quite sure it happens to some of you as well. So let me, um, let me come over here. How can you help me with my road rage? Anybody? Pray about it. Ooh, amen. And be on, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> be on time. <laughs> mm. What else does it say? Fighting with your spouse. Sometimes we go on, a, on our way to a worship service and we might have a disagreement with our spouse. And that can distract us. Those of us who are married know what I'm talking about. Sometimes it's the littlest thing. Let me, okay, I'm, I'm going to just get off track. And let me, I'm going to just talk to the men, okay, ladies? <laughs> so, brothers, you ever just put something down and you may go to another room and you come back and it's gone? <laughs> you ever look for something around the house and you know you know where you put it and then it's no longer there? <laughs> Now, what is, the, what is the pliers doing over in the drawer under the sink <laughs> instead of where the, the, the tool 
who's go? My brother. <laughs> like for me, I know it's going it's Patty. Call me Patty LaBelle. But the thing is, like I put the remote control right in one spot every time. But by the time I come home from work, that jag on thing is gone. And I don't know why I lose my mind over that. It's <laughs> like I just want to plop down and then I'm like, and it's just not there. And it's just the craziest thing. You know, now, to the aid of my brothers, sometimes you females, you just believe that you have your own sense of organization. You know, it, it, it's your way or no way. It goes, <laughs> this is where it goes. <laughs> <laughs> We know where it's at. Men, when they put stuff down, then they walk away. It's up to us, us females, to get it and put it in the pop proper place. Mm. For some reason. So, yeah. so here's the thing. It's the proper place to you. <laughs> Okay, let's move on. <laughs> let's, let's move on. But you know, sometimes small things like that break up marriages. You know, just, that's just something to think about. You know, um, we know that there's no harm, harm uh, meant. But sometimes small things break up marriages. Mm. And you know, that's... Uh, that's another lesson in this book, hmm. and we'll get to that later. Um, oh, the last bulletin. Let me come back over here. The last, can someone read the last bulletin? How often do we walk into the place of worship dressed in modesty with the attitude that if anyone stumbles over our clothing choices, the onus is on them to clean up their minds? They have the problem, not us. Mm. Wow. Read that one more time, my brother. <laughs> How often do we walk into the place of worship dressed immodestly with the attitude that if anyone stumbles over our clothing choices, the onus is on them to clean up their minds. They have the problem, not us. Mm. That's a tough one. Um, Got an answer right here. What's the answer? I say, why do it? You know, we're God's children, and and I um, and as a female, I don't need you looking at me in a way that I don't want you to. I can't help you. You know, I'm not interested, and I'm God's daughter. So why why put myself out there in a manner um, where I I somebody might treat me in a manner I don't want to be treated? And I know I don't want to be treated that way. Why, why do it? Rem let's remember who we are. That's, we that's good. We don't have to be there. Anybody else? My brother. Right. You want to start from the beginning because they, they didn't hear you. I don't dress to please other people. I dress for me. And uh, the way I dress is the way I'm comfortable with. And everybody have an opinion, but their opinion doesn't affect me. Mm. Okay. Well, we got a hand here and a hand over here. At one of the congregations I was at, there was a young woman that was, you know, she was baptized, but she was, grew up in Germany where their sense of modesty is a whole lot different than ours. And there was a few times that the women gave her a longer coat to wear mm -hmm. and she finally said you know why are you why do you keep giving me this and we're like because what you're wearing is not appropriate to be wearing outside of church let alone in the church so you know if it's if it's a woman dressing immodestly you know we as the sisters should you know should try to do something give her a blanket or or something to help cover herself and then talk to her later so you know, so you know what that that sounds like. 
and I might be wrong, but that's the way that person grew up. You know, that person grew up that way. So in their minds, nothing was wrong with it. And to go along with what Sister Debbie said, <clears throat> even though there are always going to be someone that we think is dressed offensively, but we do have to be careful not to judge people because for all we know, maybe they dress worse than that, you know, and some and they think that they're appropriate. So we can kindly educate, help a person, kindly but be careful educate. not to judge. Kindly educate and not judge. Because some people grew up that way. She might have thought or he might have thought the way he was dressed was uh, a grade up to what they normally dress. But when we become Christians, we have to be taught, like the Bible says, teach we have them to be and taught. teach them again. And if we don't teach and people grow up a certain way, I mean, every, we all have to, it's another, it's honoring God again. I mean, how we dress, even if it's what we think is okay. If it's not okay with God, it's not okay. And the, to be modest, whether we're male or female, is to honor God. I mean, we can't, and it, 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 everything, we have to be taught everything most when we come into the church and we become Christians. So, yes, mm. teaching them kindly. <laughs> but we all have to change if we're not dressing appropriately. So what's the difference between that and a person just wearing anything to worship service, like you just walked off the street? What's the difference? Somebody else? Sometimes that's all they have. So are we going to say you're not welcome here because you're not dressed this way? Amen. We can uh, allow them by all means come, and then those of us that are here and able, we can help you, you know, Amen. To, to get what you need. Mm -hmm. yeah. We can help you to get what you need. Mm -hmm. Wow. Brother Clark. Uh, this is where both extremes can be difficult because sometimes people, I know, you've seen it over the years that uh, dress to the T's is one of the con concepts. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then some people who can't dress that way feel shut out. Mm -hmm. uh, it is taking one another into consideration to consider others more highly than yourself. And, and uh, if you think back at Jesus' time, I don't, they they wore they didn't change clothes every day. <laughs> they wore the same things that they were wearing normally, mm -hmm. and many of them were slaves, and they didn't have a whole lot of choice in that. So they would, I'm sure, dress to the best mm -hmm. they could. But sometimes, by uh, it's it's dress up day instead of um, mm -hmm. you know it's, it's focus on how well you mm -hmm. look versus how well you're really focusing on helping other people. And, and some, if you're making people uncomfortable in any way, it falls on you to do something about that. However, like we've been talking about here, uh, it, it, I've, I've heard of many young people being really turned off by the, how they were approached about it. So Amen. Approach, approaching with love. Attitude. Teaching. That it's, it really doesn't matter how you feel about how you look. It's what effect are you having on other people? And, and this is kind of opposite of what I said. I do have a responsibility not to be harming someone else, be causing them to sin, for else. instance, or uh, putting on a show. So there's a lot of different ways this can go, but it's really about focusing on, on others and encouraging others and not being a stumbling block to others. But young Christians in particular, new, new people coming in, 